Chicken Ear is a brass band, and you're looking at an industrial landscape in the north of England. The countryside has been marked by the waste and ravages of men and machines. The houses and the streets are stained by smoke and fumes and people go about their daily lives. Many of them in factories. It was these factories that were the birthplace and traditional home of the brass band, although it's come a long way since then. This is the Brighouse and Rastrick Band, one of the most famous and successful bands in the world. And they're playing in a factory, in a canteen as a matter of fact, These men are making brass instruments, cornets, trumpets, trombones, tubers, euphoniums, all the instruments that go to make a brass band. This man is beginning to shape a euphonium. First, the sheet is cut, then beaten roughly into shape on an anvil. Then the edges of the sheet are crimped so that they can be soldered together with a brass coloured solder. There's the flared bell, which was made separately, being fixed to the sheet brass tube. One of the things that makes brass such a successful material for making instruments is that it's soft and easy to work. Once the pieces have been tapped together, the brazing or soldering begins.
After that, the section of the instrument is spun, pressed and shaved into its finished shape. And by now, those ugly seams have completely disappeared. Of course, brass instruments don't only feature in brass bands, they're used in concert orchestras. And for playing jazz. and even on street corners. instrument is a combination of lip movement, fingering, and not surprisingly a good deal of wind. It's the vibration of the lips that starts the sound, which is then transmitted through the long curled up tube. Most of these instruments have got three pistons or valves which add extra lengths to the tube and together with the position of the player's lips makes the notes lower or higher. So using his mouth and the three valves the player can produce all the notes he needs, 30 or 40 notes or more depending on the skill of the player.
Brass horns are amongst the oldest of instruments and, to begin with, didn't have valves. Using a slide to vary the length of the tube is a much earlier idea. This old silver trumpet, which has no valves, can only play 11 notes and had to have special tunes written for it. We've already seen that a brass instrument is a long tube which you blow down while making your lips vibrate. A short narrow tube produces a high sound. While using exactly the same position of the lips, a long fat tube produces a low sound. So, as you look at all the instruments in the brass band together, you can tell how high or low each one is just by its shape and size. And they all produce the same kind of tone. That was the second smallest instrument, the B-flat cornet, playing with a slightly larger flugelhorn. And now, the euphonium together with the baritone. And here's the smallest, the soprano cornet, playing with one of the largest in the band, the E-flat bass. All larger and smaller versions of the same thing. Only the trombone with its slide mechanism is the odd man out. The heart of a brass instrument, with the exception of the trombone, is the valve assembly. This is a collection of tubes and pistons, a sort of spaghetti junction, where the air from the player's mouth gets rerouted one way or another. It's this rerouting that makes it possible for the player to change the length of his instrument while he's playing it. Each piston has holes in it, and when pressed down allows the air through the extra loops of pipe. So, as well as knowing which positions of his lips to use, the brass player needs to know which pistons to press in order to produce a certain note. Trombones are really full tonal starch, something really dignified in the sound. Right, here it is, from the top.
Thousands of people have had their first taste of music by playing in or listening to brass bands. And brass instruments do have a fascination all of their own. Today, trumpets, cornets, trombones and tubers are providing more pleasure to more people than ever before, inside and outside factories. <laughs> Thank you. 